Hello and welcome to St Richard's Hospice Sleep Webinar. My name's Claire Roach and I'm an occupational therapist for the Living Well Service. So the webinar today is it's designed to help you develop self-help tools um, to help you get to sleep. Um, what we can't do is look at any individual medical or emotional questions. You would need to raise these with your usual healthcare provider. So the advice is just for, um, to, for today's session to aimed at giving you tools for getting a good night's sleep and not for the management of sleep disorders. So what we're going to look at today is what can prevent you from having a good night's sleep. What happens if we have insufficient sleep? We'll take a look at the sleep cycle and how a sleep diary can be useful. We'll look at unhelpful thoughts of sleep, um, the sleep environment, interventions to help you with sleep and improving sleep efficiency and the benefits of a good night's sleep. So first of all, what can prevent you from having a good night's sleep? So tea and coffee containing caffeine, um, it's a central nervous system stimulant. Um, energy drinks which contain guarana, um, that's also a stimulant and can prevent you from sleeping. Um, nicotine, nasal decongestants which can drain adrenaline, medications such as steroids, pain, recreational drugs, mental stress, alcohol which causes changes in sleeping patterns if it's taken in excess, bright light which affects the pineal gland, intense mental activity um, and the bedroom environment itself, and uh, intense environmental stimuli before bed, such as iPads, iPhones, that sort of thing. So what happens if we have insufficient sleep? Well, we have reduced alertness. It can impair your mood. It can affect memory and concentration. It can increase sleep apnea, uh, which is when your breathing stops and starts while you sleep. It can reduce your respiratory drive. Um, it affects your immunity. In some cases, it can cause weight gain and depression. So next, we're going to have a look at the sleep cycle. So during our sleep, our heart rate drops, our body temperature falls, and we experience complex changes in brain activity. An EEG, which is an electroencephalogram, gives us an insight into the brain's electrical activity when we sleep. When we first fall asleep, we enter non-rapid eye movement sleep, which on the graph is NREM. It's divided into three stages, one, two, and three, each stage becoming progressively deeper. So stages one and two are light stages of sleep from which we can be easily roused. Stage three is a deeper stage of sleep from which we're more difficult to rouse. And some people feel more disorientated if woken from this stage of sleep. Generally, after going through the NREM stages, we enter stage four, which is known as rapid eye movement, or REM sleep. With the EEG, um, it shows rapid eye movement sleep um, and being similar to wakefulness or drowsiness. So during REM stage of sleep that we tend to dream. Okay. So next we can see is a, a sleep diary. So it's, it's a daily log to help you record your sleep wake patterns. It helps to measure the quality and the pattern of your sleep, as well as factors which may affect your sleep. So on the graph there, it's quite small, but there's things like what time did you go to bed? Uh, what time you woke up? How long did it take you to first fall asleep? You know, did you fall asleep easily or was it difficult? Um, how many times did you wake during the night? Um, and what disturbed your sleep and rated the quality of your sleep um, and how you felt in the morning when you woke up. So it's really good to keep um, a, a diary of this and, um, and to see what, what potential causes could be causing sleep difficulty. So unhelpful thoughts and sleep. You may have also developed unhelpful thoughts or associations about sleep, which are making the problem worse. So as you can see on the diagram here, uh, you might need to learn or recognize and challenge your thoughts about sleep. And CBT or cognitive behavioral therapy can help people change negative thinking patterns or behaviors 
or, and has been shown to be effective in treating sleep problems. So CBT, it's based on the concept that your thoughts, feelings and physical sensations and actions are all interconnected and that negative thoughts and feelings can trap you in a vicious cycle. CBT aims to help you deal with overwhelming problems in a more positive way by breaking them down into smaller parts. You're shown how to change these negative patterns to improve the way you feel. So next we're going to look at the sleep environment. So it may help to make your bedroom quiet, dark and comfortable. Wear earplugs or use a noise machine if the environment is too noisy. Room temperature should be comfortable and warm, so ideally 16 to 18 degrees. Avoid having a TV or computer in the room and turn off your phone or anything with LED display, including clocks. Keep things such as photographs of loved ones, favourite artwork, plants or flowers to help you feel more connected to the room and avoid bright colours in the bedroom using pastels as they are more calming. Choose a bed with good support which holds the spine in natural alignment. So interventions that can help with sleep. So playing relaxing music can help promote sleep and reduce anxiety. Relaxation techniques such as meditation or guided visualizations can also help. Breathe work to help slow the mind and bring calm. So diffuse or vaporizing fragrances. A warm bath at, uh, at night can increase sleep, slow wave sleep, so that can help induce sleepiness. Using a rollerball infused with lavender has also been proven to help. And herbal teas such as chamomile can also help promote sleep. Using an eye mask can help improve melatonin production and hand and body creams used in transitional preparations for sleep can also help. So we would recommend that you try these therapeutic approaches one at a time and that way you'll be able to gauge which ones give you the maximum benefits to improve your quality of sleep. So improving sleep efficiency. So taking daily exercise morning or early afternoon is best. Establish a regular sleep schedule and learn and practice relaxation techniques. Look at positive, happy images to encourage pleasant feelings. Think positive thoughts by using affirmations can also help. Reduce the amount of napping during the day as this can cause problems getting off to sleep in the evening. Increase your daily dose of natural sunlight. Avoid having caffeine, alcohol or stimulant medications. Remove the television or computer, mobile phones and tablets from the sleeping space and ensure lighting in the bedroom is subdued and reduce the stimuli. Avoid having a heavy meal late into the evening. And in addition to the therapeutic approaches outlined, there are other lifestyle changes that you can make to promote restful sleep, quality of sleep and improve your sleep hygiene at bedtime. Sometimes something as simple as just not having the caffeinated drinks in the evening can improve the quality of sleep. 